Hello everybody and welcome to a new video on Enscudo. And today we're talking about how to create a high score listing. So let's discuss the requirements first. So what should be a high score listing in my opinion? So you can read it on screen. Best result should be top entry in the list. We can discuss this. So in my example what I'm currently doing is a game where you receive points per level. So the best would be maximum points. And the less points you get the worse your result would be. So this is also how the list should be sorted. In my case it should be sorted in descending order. The same player should be able to be multiple times in the list. For example when we think about a single player game that you start over and over again then your name would be normally every time in the high score list and that has also some um, impact on our data structure, what we will see later. Um, limited amount of entries, so we don't want to store a hundred of or a thousand of entries, but we just want to store those values, <coughs> sorry, um, that are finally in the high score listing and not yeah, lose time calculating hundreds of entries and then only showing the first ones. And it should be a class so we can easily reuse it in other games once it is tested and bulletproof as you will. So let's see. Um, further requirements are that the player name can be entered before adding the new result to the listing. It should be stored and preloaded to an text input field. And it shouldn't be hackable. So we want to store our data in a binary file which is encrypted and can't be easily edited with a text editor. So sometimes you see that people are using JSON as a file format for Godot because it is easy and handy but we don't want to do this. We go a little bit further here. And I'd like to store also additional information. Like in my survival game it would be the time played, 5 days survived, 15 minutes played or something like that. Or in the current game I'm doing a breakout clone, I want to store which level was reached by the player. So now let's go into the data structure I chose. Um, a dictionary by itself has a problem I mentioned earlier that if you use the player name as um, the key of a dictionary then we would overwrite always the same entry and we couldn't have more than one player name in the list with the same value so, or with the dictionary key. So I decided to go to go uh, with an array of dictionaries and we see here how I initialize, initialize it and I have a variable called max values that you can 
define for your high score listing as well but it is normally initialized as we see in the initialization um, if you just call in it then it would be max values equals 10 and this is also how I use it currently for a breakout I only show and store 10 values for the high score listing so here is the an init function not a ready function because as I already said it's a um, class it's a class and we get an object to be used in our game so I don't have a scene associated with it but I go with an init function method whatever you name it but this is how I initialize it so I have 10 values and the array contains 10 empty dictionaries this is in the line list append curly brackets without any content and we have I have to mention it now um, the last player I already said I want to store the player name so the last player would be the variable that stores our text input field the one that is uh, entered by the player and here we can store the player name but this variable um, no 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 that that variable only holds the name the player entered okay data structure used second page is that the dictionary contains one row of our array so the array is what I call a list here and we have a function to get one dictionary entry and this is get entry and you give it a string and the number of points I might add additional or we can overwrite this uh, function to store for instance a time value or yeah maybe a time value I don't know points could be also experience points in a adventure game the player who received most experience would be player number one whatever we receive a dictionary from get entry and this is p name p points so the list will be sorted by p points and as I already said in my example max p points is the best value so next bullet point is important because as p name is a string additional information which is not editable by the player can be added to the string so var string to write is what we actually give our get entry function and this could be in my, as i said in my example p name plus semicolon plus level plus string function level is an integer so level converted to a string and then I can add this additional information which level was reached by the player in his game um, to the get entry function and write string to write to our file or whatever you want in my survival game I maybe would write day 5 15 minutes played something like that so 
if we want to add an entry, which is another function of my class, as we saw earlier, we give it a string and an integer. We now have two cases. First one is the array contains at least one empty dictionary because we initialized it with 10 empty dictionaries. So we have a helper function test empty, which gives us back an integer value and returns minus one if no empty dictionary is found. Or it gives us the position of an empty array. The first empty array. So if it's position 5, then we get a 5 from test empty back. And the second case is that all of our max value array uh, cells are already occupied by a completed array. So we have already 10 values of, play, uh, of games played by a player. And then we use test points. So give it our points that we uh, achieved in the last round. And this gives back a boolean value and checks if points are greater than the current minimum value inside um, the stored uh, dictionaries. So, meaning that the slot in the array list can be overwritten where the minimum value is inside. So test values is another helper function. I wouldn't advise that you call it directly. It is called inside of my um, high scores class. And it loops through all the dictionaries in the array and creates a sorted array of all results. So at the end, when test values has completed, um, we have R0, result 0 is less than R1, less than R2, less than R3, and as many as dictionary values as you have, or max values. So if you have 10 values de defined as max values, then um, it would be R9 on the last position, meaning because it's a sorted array of the results that R9 is our best value and R0 is our worst case, so the worst result received from these 10 games stored in our file. Additionally, test values, because we are working on an array now, so we can easily call the min and the max fun functions of the array class, and we store them directly as minval and maxval as class variables to be used later on in other cases. And on the other side, we don't want to have null values. So um, if the array is empty at the beginning, um, it gives back minval equals zero and maxval equals zero for empty arrays, just to be on the secure side. And now we have a get minimum value position, get min value position. And we saw in our sorted array, we have 
the first position is already the minimum value. And we can now look into the actual array and get the position of this value. This is only intermediate, so normally after storing it, it should be all sorted, but we come to this later. But for now, it's better to be on the safe side and to calculate the position with this function. And this function gets the actual array position of the dictionary containing the minimum value. So we always skip the key, we only look, if you know dictionaries, you have a key and a value, so we only look into the values of all the dictionaries stored. And this arrow, array position will be overwritten, because as I said earlier, it's a minimum value, and as we want to write a new value to the high score list, we assume that the points of the new game are greater than minval. Otherwise, it wouldn't be a new high score. So and now, of course, we have our own data structure. So now we need a sort function to, to sort back our dictionaries. We can't sort them by key, because key is the player name and it doesn't make sense to, to sort it by a player name if, for example, I'm playing the game 10 times, then always the key is the same. So we need to build this sort function manually, as we need to sort dictionaries in an array and there is no such built-in function available. Test values, as we already saw, gave us the array sorted values. So what we are now doing is create a copy. High scores copy is now empty again and contains, as we saw in the initialize function, just uh, for max values an array with uh, empty dictionaries. So what we are doing now is we take our sorted values, remember it could be only five arrays contain a dictionary, uh, five slots in the array contain a dictionary value and then we need to get that size. So of course when we have 10 positions occupied in the arrays and length is also 10. But it could be when you play the game for the first time that sorted, well, for the second time, that uh, the sorted values array only has one value inside of it. And now I like this function because it's a it's a while loop. Normally I'm doing for loops, but here it's uh, we have two um, in indices. One is i and one is j. So we uh, sorted value is from from below. J starts with zero. And i is actually the position where we want to store our um, list position in, in the new array, uh, yeah, array high scores copy. So what we do is we get the next sorted values j, starting with 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on, and call our get min value position for the current temporary minimum and write back the list position to our copy high scores uh, high scores copy 
I position. And then we add plus 1 to J and subtract 1 of I. So I hope that this is all understandable. If not, please um, give me some comments. But yeah, that's how I did it and it works. So we're still in the sort function and we started with the min value in sorted values. Check the length of this array which can never be larger than max values. Then we write it to the last position, high scores copy i, in the temporary copy. I already explained that j goes through the sorted values, i descends from the end of the array. Okay, you can read it by yourself, but this is what I already explained previously. So now we are at the point that we want to save and load our file. And I already mentioned nightquestgames.com in the previous window. Um, I, I think it was uh, um, screen, uh, screen manager scene manager uh, video so on his uh, blog page I also found uh, a singleton to save and load a game in, with a robust system and robust is what I already had in my um, yeah list of necessary items I want to have an encryption and I want to have a binary safe data file that can't be edited by a e uh, text editor. And, and we could, of course, uh, use the save load system for other items in the game as well. In my um, survival game, for example, I could also store other items in the same system and it's implemented as a singleton so we put it in an auto load a singleton is a object that only can exist once in a game so you can't create a duplicate of a singleton or whatever that's the name singleton where, the, where it comes from and yeah, it was robust and works out of the box and I didn't do any editing using uh, for my example. So that's what we want to have, a robust system that is tested and that we can reuse in other projects as well. So what I'm doing is we have the serialize function inside of the high scores GD and it just does uh, contains two lines of code a store var list so we put our array of dictionaries inside of it and we store a Pascal string namely the last player name that's all. We have the last player for our line edit and the list containing all dictionaries in a serialized version that can be saved to disk. And the file handler in the title file access class is used uses encryption. And when deserializing we need to do it in the same order but it, as each object contains its own serialized, deserialized methods, it's just fine. It works, as I said, out of the box. Deserialize is now the other way around and first I get var to get back my list, the array of dictionaries, and get Pascal string for the last player name. 
And this needs to be done after high scores object has been initialized in the game, so inside of the ready function. So whenever we start up the game, we just call the um, deserialize in the ready function. It throws an error, but it could be ignored uh, for the if if no file uh, save file exists. But yeah, the ready function is the way to do it. And now we can build the high score table in the game and use last player for input fields. So now look, let's look into our um, yeah game, whatever the canvas layer that I set up to test everything. And as you can see, we have some forms that started. And so last player was Björn, which is my official first name. But let's change it to Enskudo and get some random points. And we can directly see in the debug mode that now Enskdo has its first entry in the high score list and we can show it. So that was the worst value. Let's try it to get it better and that's better. Now get the first place, no, second place. Ah, that is the first place. So, that looks better. And we see that all but one dictionary items are occupied. Now another one gets added. And if, and now the dictionary list is complete. So now we will override the 1233 points of Enskudo with the next entry. So let's get some more random points. That is a hit. So, and it worked. Um, and now I want to show you the last thing. If we get less points than 2018, Ah, perfect. So you see the submit button gets deactivated. So you can use inside of your game logic also the test points function which returns a boolean value to just not allow that this can be added. This, uh, yeah result of the game can be added to the high score list. Um, but this is a game logic and not a part of uh, the high score object itself. But it allows you to just deactivate inside of your game to not push any values below the tenth value of the high score list. And this one is allowed, so let's submit it, and then we see that the 2018 will get removed. That works fine, and that was everything that I wanted to show you. Hope you like it, and if you use it, just show me the projects where you use it, and of course, I hope you liked and subscribed to my channel, like this video and come back later when I have more content for you. So speed programming is not forgotten, but I wanted to show you this one first because I will use it in Breakout as well. And that's why I developed the high score list in the first place. So thanks for watching and see you next time. Bye.